Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review for you guys. A book that I will be sharing with you guys is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. In the preface of this book, Ken Follett talks about the creation of this book. What really interested me in what he said in the preface is the fact that he actually wanted to write this book way before he even started coming out with his thriller novels. And the reason why he didn't do what he wanted was that the publisher said to build up his fan base before he actually created this epic and he was like okay so he went and did that and I wish he had forgotten about this epic because I really did not like it at all. So let's just first talk about what this book is about and before I do that I'm gonna put it down because it's freaking heavy. So this book is told in multiple perspectives. You have Tom, he is a builder of sorts. It is just very useful that his name is Tom Builder. And he has a wife and two children. His wife is expecting and he is pretty much wandering from town to town looking for a job. He could have had another job, but he chose not to because he has his dream of building a cathedral. Then you have Philip, a prior, prior of a small monk community who ends up moving to King's Bridge and becoming the prior of this crazy big, really needing to be fixed up place and he gets involved with a lot of political intrigue. Then you have William, who is a part of the political intrigue, and he has a part to play. And then you have Lady Eliana, who had said no to William's proposal of sorts, and we don't know why exactly, maybe because of him, maybe because of her. That's all the perspectives that I know, because I did not finish this. I tried my hardest to get through this book. I was almost to 200 pages when I realized that I could not make myself finish it. And first, let's talk about the writing. The writing was very dull. There was no beautiful imagery, no, nothing about the writing was beautiful. It felt very elementary. I felt like he was very repetitive in certain descriptive words and I really don't like when an author uses the same descriptive word to describe the same thing over and over again. I felt myself being taken out of the story so many times, but not only because of the writing, not only, and I will get into what took me out of the story most, but let's first talk about the genre of this book. So when I went into this book, I did not realize it was supposed to be fantasy, but then someone else talked about this book and said it was supposed to be fantasy, and I'm just like, I'm already 200 pages in and there's nothing that would clue me in that it's a fantasy and everybody likes, com likes to compare it to the Song of Ice and Fire series but this book cannot hold a candle to the Song of Ice and Fire series at all. I really did not care for the idea that this was fantasy because it didn't even brush on fantasy in the first 200 pages and you would have thought it would have. And then we get into the characters who are flat and who don't really feel like characters at all but just tools to build up the story and to create something out of nothing kind of a thing. And I did not like it. The story should be, the things that happen in this book should be what's affecting the characters, not the other way around. And at least for me, that's I really did not like the characters. They were not likable. And here's the thing, they were either good or they were bad. There was no in-between. And I don't mind that completely in certain books. But usually with characters, there's something about them that you know that they're not completely good. They have their bad thoughts and they are good thoughts and they have their doubts and their weaknesses and stuff and you have all this stuff. But you either have a really good, weak character or you have a really good, strong character or you have a really, really bad character or an evil character, so on and so forth. There's just no in-betweens. There's no, you know fighting with their good and bad side kind of a thing and I really just did not care for that. The characters came off as flat and not realistic at all because and then you have how 
have Tom who keeps going on and on about building his cathedral and he's just enthralled with the idea of being able to build it and he goes in such detail all about what it would look like and it takes away from the story and you're just like okay I get it you want to build a cathedral now I'll move on and talk about the things that are actually pertinent to what's happening right now I mean you're in the middle of fighting somebody or you're in the middle of having an argument with your wife or whatever it could be and yet you're talking about a cathedral it's like no thank you Right here, there might be a little bit of a spoiler, but it's very pertinent to why, why it took me out of the reading and why it made me not want to read it anymore. And I really don't think it's a spoiler spoiler. Like, it's a spoiler because you're not told about this right off the bat or in the synopsis, but it's not exactly a spoiler because it isn't the major story plot or whatever. It could affect your reading, so if you're okay with hearing it because it's pretty small in the overall thing but it can be pretty big for you if you want to know what took me out and what might and how it might affect you I would keep watching if you don't want it to be spoiled at all and you're looking forward to reading this book I would say go away right now Tom is a character who I never really liked from the very beginning because although he seems strong he's also very weak he doesn't want to sacrifice his own desires for his family, which really peeved me off because as a kid and a father, you know you have to be taking care of them. Yet all he wants is to fulfill his dream. Is that if you want only to fulfill your dream, then you should have never gotten married, you should have never had kids, yet he has them all and he should be thinking what's best for them, but he just ignores all of that and pretty much almost starves them to death because of that. Not only did that irk me about him, but when they meet Ellen the first time, he automatically lusts for her. And he keeps saying how much his wife is his soulmate. I found my soulmate and I love her so much. Yet when he sees Ellen, he automatically starts lusting for her. I mean, it's one thing to say, Oh, she's beautiful but to lust for her that was signified that maybe your wife is not exactly your soulmate or you, you don't love her as much as you're saying you do which is a very huge difference between his lust for the woman and his love for his wife which I find very annoying because he's contradicting himself and I'm not sure if that's what Ken Boyle wanted or not but it just didn't make no sense at all and then after an event happens, he major event, he's greedy, he's upset, he's searching for his child and he's fallen on the ground, almost in a delusional state, he's possibly dying kind of a thing and he sees this person coming forth and he doesn't know who it is but he has with her and then he realizes it's Ellen and he's like oh it's Ellen I'm just gonna have sex with her and he has sex with her and it's just like what what you're grieving for your wife and then you go and have sex with another woman even an hour after she's dead and in the grave what the freaking hell not only that, there was this magical weird thing going on with it where he was like, she's an angel and and I'm just like, what is going on? I don't understand this. I mean, how can you do this? You were just saying a few pages before that your wife was your soulmate. How could you want to have sex with somebody in the middle of your grief? And I don't get it because it happened in such a weird and strange way that it pulled me right out of the story. I was like, no, this is not happening. I can not only did he lose his way. He thought he had lost his child. If I was on the brink of maybe passing out dead and my wife or my husband had just died and I thought I lost my child, and I thought I saw an angel, I'd be like, Angel, can you tell me where my child is? I can't find him. 
but I wouldn't have sex with the freaking angel. With that ran over, I did press on with the book a few 50 pages further and I was starting Philip's perspective and I had actually started to like it but then I realized that the only purpose of his character and all the other characters was to connect the other storyline with that storyline with that storyline and to have all these neat very too neat connections and that was very bothersome because I was like I was starting to like Philip and if he had made Philip more dynamic of a character I would have appreciated it maybe I would have actually gone further into the book but it didn't happen for me and then we talk about the setting of the book which is supposed to be in the 1100s yet the vernacular and the way he writes the story could have been any time. It could have been in the 1800s and it wouldn't have made a difference. And the last major issue I have with this book is the way he uses the multiple pers perspective technique in his writing. I love multiple perspectives because you get a deeper connection with the story and with each of the characters and it also helps you to understand what's happening to other people's eyes and you kind of have this deeper experience when it comes to the story and the characters and all the feelings and emotions that are happening. Sometimes it's the best way to do it, especially if it's a very complicated story and there's just so many things going on, but he does not do it well at all. I thought that when I got to the next chapter and it started off with that other person's perspective, it was going to be that person's perspective until he went but then you'd be like a paragraph in, and then you would hear someone else's voice for a sentence and then it would go back and you're like what what just happened like where did that come from you it confuses you and you pulls you out of that person's perspective and it confuses you because so i absolutely did not like this book i give it one star i'm really 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 disappointed because I was so looking forward to this book. My mom did an amazing job of picking this book out because I like historical fiction. I like epics. I like stories that create this complicated interwoven craziness stuff and if it's done well, I love it. But Ken Follett did not do good at all. And I said I gave it one star. If you have read this book and you liked it, tell me like why you liked it because I just couldn't take this book but I understand that others might like it. Didn't? Let's commiserate and rant about why we didn't like it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, comment down below, give me a thumbs up if you like, and sub if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.